they don't want to come in at any more than they can save. Welcome everyone, good evening. We thank you for joining us for our Thursday night live stream service. It's such a wonderful thing to, to join you in your homes this evening. We ask that you would share this live stream link with your family and friends. Tell others that we're on and you know at this time we want to enter into a time of praise and worship as we honor and glorify the Lord and even right where you are you can just join us, you can lift your hands, you can welcome the presence of the Lord in your living rooms, in your kitchen, in your bedrooms. And even if you take the, the phone or the laptop to your car, you welcome the presence of the Lord. And this evening, we just want to honor his name. We just want to glorify his name. Continue to share this link with your family and friends and your loved ones as we lift up the name of Jesus, as we glorify the mighty one the awesome one, the great one, who has all power. All power belongs to our God, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence, to honor and glorify you, to lift your name on high. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Worthy is your name, oh God. This evening we break every chain, all the strongholds that are up against us, we command and demand to break in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you. There is power. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. 
Thursday night where we can give God the praise we're living in a time when the devil himself is going to capitalize and monopolize on this whole pandemic situation and take advantage in terms of unleashing every possible disaster there are people living in fear there are people um, living with anxiety there are people living Hopelessness, Akina, not even sure about their job. Um, the economy is not good globally. But, you know, um, in the midst of what the devil will do to destroy, God is able to say, I will build my church. And that assurance that we have when he said he will build his church at the gates of hell. And I believe out of this, the true church is now coming forward. Coming forward in the sense that um, we must rise up in power. It's a deception for the church to go into what you call in a corner and just preach via live stream. But this series that we are doing starting from today that will continue for the balance of the year on spiritual warfare. It is, you know, ask people to join the program, join the live. And um, it's preparing us as a church to effectively engage in battle with the enemy. And that enemy is the devil. It's not your neighbor. It's not a friend. It's not the government, it's not the opposition. The real enemy of the church is the devil. And his assignment is he come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And until Jesus returns and take his church, that assignment will continue to be first towards the church. The devil's first target is the church. Secondly, go at those on the outside. So today with us, Valin is going to come and share and share on spiritual warfare different week we will have different persons sharing on the topic and covering a wide area um, in terms of spiritual warfare um, to help us as a body of Christ. So I want to hand over to Valley now as she um, take up this topic today and share it. Good night everyone. Good night Redemption Worship Center and thank you so much for joining in tonight. For joining us for this interesting topic that we are diving into tonight, which is first introduced as a topic of spiritual warfare. So I'm really happy that you're tuned in as we uh, say, you know, share this, share the link, call a friend, let people know that you know we're online, we're not physically together, but we will be together one way or the other. Nothing is going to stop us from reaching out to each other and communicating and chatting with each other, and most importantly, hearing from the Word of God. And um, I know when we hear about spiritual warfare, you know, you know, many times we think in years gone by, we looked at spiritual warfare, we thought of it as, you know, a guy with a pitchfork, a guy with a mask, and you know, we, we tend to look at the spiritual world with things like that, but the spiritual world has gotten so sophisticated now. It, it's so different now that things, you can entertain things, you can purchase things, you can look at things, and not even know that you have opened that door for different spirit, spiritual things to come into your life. So, you know, we have to be cautious and we have to be guided. And tonight, I'm just going to start with the introduction into the topic. And as far as I explained, we will continue it over the weeks and go deeper into various topics surrounding spiritual warfare. So the truth is, you know, Christians, we are involved in an everyday battle. An everyday battle as Christians. Once you have given your heart to Jesus, the enemy is after your soul. Right? And that's what he's after. He wants your soul. So many times we, we get distracted, we, you know, we begin to divert our time and our energy to so many other things, but the warfare remains real. The enemy is here to steal, to kill and destroy, and what he's after tonight is your soul. So when we talk about spiritual warfare and we enter into it and we discuss it, 
we must be mindful of what is the enemy after. You may say I'm sick or I, I may not have, I may have lack in my life. There may be things that I have need of. You know, just distractions. Or he may use those things to get to you. But what is the enemy after tonight? He's after your soul. And if he can distract you, if he can get you to get involved in other things and cause you to lose your very soul, he would have won the fight. And wanna, as we continue our foundation scripture, I want us to remember, and we're going to use Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And I want us, as we go through this series, I want us to remember that we have authority. Authority is the lawful right. It's our sense of ability. It's delegated influence. It's power. It's our legal right. And that's what we have. God gave it to Jesus. And as we have accepted Jesus, we have that authority. When we stand in the name of Jesus, we stand under the blood. And we have that authority to speak and to bring change to different situations. And I want to start by reiterating to us that spiritual warfare is real. You know, and as Christians, we need to be aware of the enemy and his army and learn how to overcome it. A lot of times we, we don't give emphasis to it. We, we concentrate on other things and we act like if the spiritual world is not real. But it's just as real as we look at each other and as we talk tonight, spiritual warfare is, is real. And, and the growth of de demonic activity is real. It has been growing. There's, there's growth in the occultism, in cults. A lot of these things, they are, they are growth. And we must become aware of it so we can know how can we deal with these things, right? As I said, we must learn that we have authority and we must know that the authority is given to us by the Lord because he knows that we need it. What does John 14, 12 tell us? It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. So we can do even greater works when we stand in our authority. Many things are being used today to replace God's truth. And that's where we begin to see the door between truth and lie. You know, there's a thin line and, and the line gets smaller and smaller and smaller because many things are being used right now to replace what is the truth. We have a lot of people that are now empty, spiritual emptiness, and, and you know, they're just searching for different things in the secular world. So we have people turning to psychic powers for spiritual health. A lot of people are moving into the New Age movement and to science and searching to find what exactly is the truth. And the enemy, of course, he's just the father of lies. And he's here to fill our minds with a lot of things that are not truth. But we have the responsibility to find the truth and walk in that authority. So we cannot afford to ignore the activities and the attacks of the devil. We must understand, we must diagnose the situation and look into the light of God's word. That's where we would get the truth. That's where we'd be able to stand in spiritual warfare when we get to the truth. 1 Timothy 4.1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devil. And those are some of the things we're going to see as we live in the last days. We're going to see men falling away from the truth, falling away from the truth, turning away from the truth, and now starting to believe in things that, that are not true. These are things that we would see in the last days. But Romans, encourage, Romans encourages us and it says, you know, in all things, church, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. So we will overcome. Believers, tonight I want to encourage us. We must fight back. We must fight back with a good fight of faith. You know, many will lose the battle. It's a sad thing. But many believers will not be able to stand in this time. We will get carried away with things that are not truth. We may be distracted, but 
I want to encourage us tonight. We must fight back. And that's why we're looking at this series. That's why we're talking about spiritual warfare tonight. Because we can't relax. We can't sit back and say that it's going to be okay. The enemy is waging war on our souls, on our churches, on our faith, on what we believe. And we must stand in our authority. We must stand in that truth. And we must fight back. Okay, we are not going to accept. What does Ephesians 6, 11 to 13 teach us as believers? It says, put on the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 12 says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's what we started off by saying. We don't wrestle against people that we see, right? But it's real. Yeah. 13 says, wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand the evil day. And that's how we stand as believers, by putting on the entire armor yeah. of God. And we know what the scripture goes on to say. We put on the helmet, we wear the shield of faith. And that's what we do as we enter into spiritual warfare. We, we stand and we understand that we have authority. Yes. We understand that. And then we dress ourselves in the armor of God. So it's not that we shy away from the topic. It's not that we become afraid of the topic. But we get the knowledge yes. and we understand who God is, what he has placed inside of us and we stand. Yes. Amen. You know, sad. It, it's really sad to see that the times that we live in, we see growth of so many things that are not truth. And just to give us a little, little, little bit of statistics tonight, um, a bookstore in America carrying occult literature, and it sells over $17,000 US dollars each month as well as day-long courses in, in, in palmistry each, each month. There are also 10 large book clubs in the United States with membership over, of over 3 million, which deal in the world of the occult. And these are just people out there searching, empty, trying to find stuff, right? There, there's a 24-hour day, 24-hour day Zodiac telephone service number company which places computer horoscopes and 2,000 college, 2, college students. There are 60,000 sorcerers practicing black magic, practicing magic throughout occult formulas. And these are things that are on the rise, that are on, they are growing daily in the world as we speak. As we speak, these things are growing. It is estimated that today that there are over 100 million people around the world that adhere to spiritism and those are some of the topics that we will touch on as we go further and further into the topic of of spiritual warfare and i know this is alarming and this is just a few of the statistics but these are some of the things that we can turn a blind eye to we got to know what's happening it could be as simple things as you look at something on tv or you purchase something and you know you invite these things into your home from horoscopes and we're going to touch on all of these things as we go further on you know but now we have to thank god the message and the gospel and we have victory and the faith in christ we know that he has won the victory over sin Amen. over death and, and over the enemy so even as these things rise god still has ultimate power first corinthians 15 57 it tells us but thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he gives us victory over everything that we would face. In Luke 10, 19, he says, Behold, I give unto you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. So even as we see the, the rise of the occult and the rise of the things that are not truth to the word of God, we still hold on to what his word says. What does Matthew 10, 1 teach us? It says, and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits 
to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Matthew 10 verse 8 says, to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers, to raise the dead, to cast out the devils, freely have received, freely give. And this is the authority and this is the power and this is the foundation of what we are beginning to touch on which is spiritual warfare. This is the foundation. You must know the authority. You must know that you stand there in that power and you are not defeated. So it's not for the church to sit and, and beg for deliverance and beg to be set free, but we have the word of God. We have the blood of Jesus. We have that authority, you know, and we, we demand it of the enemy now. You, you are sitting in a position where you can demand that you be set free. We don't have to sit in captivity anymore. Amen? Yeah. And as I wrap up, I want to talk about some definitions and some occult words and, and things that we must be quite familiar with. We must understand these words and understand these practices and understand these definitions as we go forward. And, and some of the things common to the occult world. We look at cults, which is a system of religious worship admiration or devotion to a person or thing, especially as a form of intellectual snobbery, a creed or a sect, right? We have cartomancy, this is fortune telling by cards. And you know, we have a lot of people, and I, I know even some believers, you know, they may begin to look to other people to tell them, what's my future? But what does the word of God tell us? He told Jeremiah, Jeremiah I know the plans that I have for you, I have good plans for you, plans to prosper you, plans to give you an unexpected end. So we don't have to get caught up in these things, in horoscopes. Uh, this is about the configuration of the planets, especially the time of a person's birth, from which astrologers predict the future. We don't need to go to anyone to predict our future. You know, God is going to reveal to us his plans. We have palmistry. This is a practice or profession of or telling a person's future by the reading of their palms. And these are some of the practices that we need to caution. We need to be cautioned about. Some of the practices of the occult world, we have Satanism, and this is the worship of Satan, using rites which imitate Christian rites. So we need to be cautious. Sometimes it may look like it's worship unto God, but it's not. Seance, this is a meeting of persons. You know, where, we, where they generally will call forth the dead. And, and these are things, I don't want us to think that these are things that are not real and that are not happening. These things are happening, church. We need to realize these are happening right here. Clairvoyance is, is a second sight. We use as a, a, a medium to forecast distant happenings through visions. Conjure. This is to summon up a spirit by invocation. So, you know, sometimes somebody says somebody had passed away and they go to a, a, a science and they try to bring that spirit back. These are all things familiar with the occult and these things are not biblical. When we begin to put our hands to these things, we begin to open that door for the enemy. We begin to open the door for him to come in and begin to bring different things that follow with these things. These things that are not of God. And these are the things that lead to strongholds. Sometimes you wonder, you get a strong, because you have opened the door, you have invited things that are not of God. You can bring a curse even onto your life. A curse is an invocation or prayer for divine punishment or harm to come upon someone. And when you open certain doors, a curse can now come onto your life. So that's why we need to be guarded about things that are not biblical. Things of the occult, things of those, those works. We don't want to get ourselves entangled in something that we are unable to get ourselves out of. It costs us so much. We can lose our very own soul by getting involved in these things that are not of Christ. And as I said, that's where sometimes we have strongholds, right? A stronghold that is in our life and we don't know. We need to understand that, you know, Satan seeks to establish strongholds in our lives by which he can bring us down or hinder our walk with the Lord. 
And these strongholds are normally established in our minds. It's established in our minds. That's where it starts. A stronghold is something in a person's life that the enemy controls. It starts in your mind and the enemy has control of it. In some areas, it's pride. In some areas, it's lost in the mind. You know, it's a weakness. It's a weakness that the enemy takes control of. And that now becomes a stronghold for the enemy to use. You're following me? And every time the enemy wants to, you know, fight you, he has that weakness that he would use and that stronghold that he would use. And, and there he begins to manipulate your mind, manipulate your life. So it's important as believers, we must identify our weaknesses. Identify the strongholds that the enemy have in your life. Don't be afraid to do it. Use this time and as we go through this series, identify your weaknesses because that's where the enemy comes in. That's where he develops that stronghold in your mind and begins to manipulate you. So you know that you must identify it. And 2 Corinthians 10, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. And I shared the scripture before, right? Our weapons are not of this world, right? On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish the strongholds. So we can demolish these strongholds. We identify the weaknesses, we identify the strongholds, and we pull them down. As I said, Satan will normally use our weakness, our habits, as his battleground, and that's where he will launch his fiery darts against us, right? Satan and his demons are spirits, and their desire is to have a physical medium through which to express their activities. Their power is useless, but it, and it can be expressed when we open up, when we invite, that power can be used, right? So, I mean, I want to encourage us that there are, there are strongholds that can be set up in our minds, and these are truly the weaknesses that we have. So it's important, even as we go through this topic of spiritual warfare, that we identify what these, what these areas are, and we begin to pray, and we begin to pull down these strongholds that are operating in our minds. So as I said, I'm doing an overview tonight, an introduction to spiritual warfare, to encourage us, to let us know that it's a real thing, it is a real topic that's happening out there, and we must stand in our authority, we must stand in that authority tonight, and be able to pull down the strongholds that, that are taking place in our lives tonight. So you need to go a little bit to your right, to try to social distance yes, here as are. much as possible. Yes, we are. <clears throat> um, uh, before we pray, Valin, this is an interesting topic in the sense that when you look at um, there are some areas that the New Age movement, the New Age movement is a worldwide occult coalition of networking religious, political, and economic forces. And this is what is going to come together. There's a liberal society that embraces religion, occultism, politics, economy. And um, the forces will try um, to one goal is to set up a one world system to be headed by one man. Yes. And he's to be considered the most highly um, evolved person on earth. And the opposition will be wood. And so we have to be careful as a church that we don't get webbing yes. to this whole setup <laughs> that the devil's setting up. And um, you know, you were sharing some of the statistics earlier. And um, like in Great Britain, it, you didn't left out this one. Yeah, in Great Britain, it's exp, it is estimated that 50% of the people are involved in, in some way with the occult, yet only 2% to church. attend yes. church. Yes. Now, when you travel, you realize you'll see that over 40 million Americans trust in astrology in the United States. And um, there are what you call 10,000 full-time and 175,000 part-time astrologers. So when you look at the statistical data, in France, there are 60,000 sorcerers practicing magic 
occult formulas, incantations. And so that you see the London Times reported that there are over 8,000 practicing witches. And I think the data has changed a little yes, bit. Yes. It has gone up and increased. All right. Um, so that when you look around, you realize that it, the numbers are going up out there. Um, it is estimated that today there are over 100 million people around the world that ad ad adhere to spiritism. But there is a search for that. <laughs> there is a search for truth. There is also a search for God. And if we don't present the truth and if we don't stand up, and let me just say this church and believers, now is not the time to be doctrinally sunk, eschatology in terms of your sharing right and have all these things. Um, the devil knows all these things. We come up against a real force that that will do everything in America where we see the church shut down because of health reason. <clears throat> the, um, the church is under persecution globally. And I want to encourage us as a body of Christ, let us prepare for warfare. Let us prepare in the middle of this pandemic, COVID-19, when the devil thought that he would have shut the churches down because technically, when the church closed, it's the, one of the fund, there some fundamentals, um, which are assembling as saints, um, dedication, laying hands on the sick, baptism. And um, we have Zoom baptism class. So we will have baptism in church in the midst of the lockdown, um, adhering to all the protocols. And so if you need to join that baptism class, you can let us know and we'll sign you up for the live stream um, Zoom baptism class, but we have to engage in warfare. So I want to encourage every pastor, every believer, to not just sit down and take it lightly, but let us engage in warfare against the enemy. But uh, Valid, we must also prepare for it because yes. if we don't prepare for it, we can find ourselves becoming yes. becoming a victim rather than a victor. There, yeah. most people are afraid to confront the enemy because he comes at them. And you realize most people that get involved in, in, in exorcism or casting out demons, the devil will leave you alone. But we are here as a body of Christ, together as a church, to, to drive out the powers of darkness, to say to the devil, you have no way, there is no way that you will take over Trinidad as one of your territory. But Trinidad will remain La Trinity, the name after the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we as a church and we as believers must come to that place united together where the new age movement you see the mystical world the spiritual world the political world the economic world and all these are business world coming together to join forces to usher in the antichrist so too we as a church must come together the time has come and, and you know what is good about this valley it didn't have no pastor with no mega church now <laughs> not long ago everybody talk about the mega church but no, yeah, no mega church. Now you have a mega believer. Yes. Believers now who would realize I need to stand up and become strong and start fighting as a body of Christ. So whether you have mega mind or whatever, we are all one in this yes. battle together to take back Trinidad and Tobago from the hands of the enemy. As we prepare to pray, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, I want you to know him, accept him as your Lord. You can serve him. If you want to follow up, we can follow you up. Um, you can call us. My number is 6832031. And the church number is 6724262. And then you can email me. Easy. KeithRamdas at gmail.com. And um, I didn't want any titles in front of it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's just a joke. And um, so that you can call. We can counsel you. Lead you on to a baptism class. And have a baptism where you could serve the Lord. If you're under the under a spiritual attack, demonic attack, remember when Saul wasn't hearing from God, he went to the witch at Endor. Yes. He seeked a witch, a spiritist, who would invoke her from the dead. But I want to let you know, God judge him for that. Mm -hmm. I want you to come to that place. We don't have to go to the dead to look for life. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. We don't have to go to the devil to look for the answer because he's the author of destruction. The Bible, oh, you read it from Genesis to Revelation, Jesus is the answer. Yes. He's the lover of your soul. He's the care of your home. He's a provider to your family. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, I pray that against every territorial spirit, every power of darkness that is that is roaming around to homes and families, those of you who are looking at this program, right now you feel you're under demonic attack. I pray in the name of Jesus, we thank the authority over your home, over your family, over your physical body, and every spirit that is interfering with your life, in Jesus' name, we come against it. We sang that song. There is power in the blood of Jesus. And I declare that the blood of Jesus has power to save, power to deliver, power to heal, power to transform. And I break that chain. We think authority over it right now to set your home, set your body, set your family free. In Jesus' name, from every sickness. We declare that every sickness that the devil has placed upon your body, it must leave in the name of Jesus. We declare must leave. We speak healing. We speak wholeness. We speak strength. And Father, Father, I pray that every spirit that wants to come to destroy, Jesus, you came that you, they would have life. We speak life to your family. I pray, God, that you would bless every home. You are the, you are the one that owned the cattle on a thousand hill. You own all the resources. And I pray, God, that you will bless your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to encourage you, Valin, thanks for sharing. And every, uh, every Thursday, you'll have another person presenting on the topic. I pray that we'll grow on to become stronger spiritually. Join us on Sunday morning, 9 a.m. for a, a live stream, live worship from Redemption Worship Sanctuary. And we'll be back again next week, Thursday, to continue the series. Share this with somebody. God bless you, and do have a good day.